Who had followed Jesus? Who Jesus had called as disciples were all hiding somewhere. It is women who were out there going to embark Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Men are supposed to really take the lead. But this time, the men are taken out. And they were all hiding, afraid. They were afraid that they would be arrested. Remember, Peter had already denied that, you know, he knew Jesus. He had denied. He said, who are you talking about? And this was a small girl asking him. And you see, because you were a Christian, there are certain The way he spoke alone, if you read the Bible, he said that your accent alone gives you away. You are one of them. He said, me? No. I don't know him. If you were a true Christian, there's something about you. When you stand somewhere and you say that I'm not a Christian, people know that you are still a Christian because there are certain things, if you are really, really a Christian, you cannot stop doing. If you are truly a Christian, you, you see, places that you don't have to say the name of Jesus, you say it and you give yourself away. Hallelujah. Amen. Because there is something inbuilt in you. You go with the Holy Spirit living in you. So wherever you are, you are identified. The people who were called Christians, it is by their attitude, their character, their lifestyle, that they saw them and they said, ah, these people, they are not ordinary. They follow that man, Jesus. And that is how come the name Jesus was given to them. Bible says in Corinthians that as we walk, people are doing what? Reading. We are like newspapers. We are like written, uh, 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 written words that people are reading. So sometimes it is not the things that you say that makes you a Christian. It is the way you live that makes you a Christian. Hallelujah. Amen. It is not always that you have to stand and open your mouth and say something to somebody. By the act and by your lifestyle, some people can see you and say that this man is a Christian. Hallelujah. Amen. He predicted his uh, resurrection many times. Yet, this woman went to and bowed him. This man had walked with them. He has told them that on the third day, I will rise. If you were bound him, how will he arise? Many of us are embalming Jesus. Many of us, by our actions, we embalm him. Many of us, by the things that we do, is keeping Jesus still in the grave. But you see, he will never stay in the grave. Because he is no more there. That's right. When they got there, in their minds, Jesus was still in the grave. But when they got there, he was not there. But they did not allow anything to stop them from going to the grave. Yes, in our minds, we may think that Jesus is still in the grave. Why are you saying this? It is very simple. By your actions, you don't believe that Jesus will do this thing or that thing for you. And by you doubting what he can do, you put him back in the grave. You put him back in the grave. Why? Because Jesus said that he has risen. And because he's risen, he has authority over all powers, over all principalities. And you are still afraid. The fact that you are afraid means that he cannot do what he has said he will do. And if he has not risen and has not taken control over all these forces, then it means that he is still in the grave. If he has not, the only way he overcame that is when he rose up from the dead. That's right. If you still 
saying that he has not conquered death, then it means that we're still in the grave. So many of us, in our minds, Jesus is still in the grave. And therefore, the things that we want him to do for us, he cannot do because he's dead like Mohammed. You know why there is ISIS, Boko Haram, Al-Qaeda? You know why? Because Muhammad is dead and he right. cannot fight for himself. That's right. He is dead, so he needs some people to fight for him. If, if Islam will stand, they will have to continue doing what they are doing. If they stop, there is no power in it anymore. The power is in man, but for us, the power is in God. Man. And Jesus is able to fight his own battle. He, look, when you go to some place and somebody insults Jesus, you don't need to fight for him. He can fight for himself. Because he's alive. The dead cannot fight for themselves anymore. Buddha cannot fight for himself anymore. Krishna, Hare Krishna, cannot fight for himself anymore. But our Jesus is alive. Amen. And because he's alive, he can fight for himself. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And not only for himself, but he fights for you as well. He's the one fighting our battles for us. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's read Psalm 16, verse 10. I just want you to know that his resurrection is not an afterthought. It is not something that when he died, they just sat down and then planned something. Hallelujah. Amen. Psalm 16, verse 10. Because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead, nor will you let your faithful one see decay. Jesus never saw decay. His body never decayed. Amen. And you see, his resurrection is not like any other one. When they went and they went into the tomb, what makes it special is that the um, the, I would say the turban. Let me use the word turban. You know, when somebody dies in those days and they're going to bury, they, they will cover their head and then they will put on something very nice, like a cloak or something. When they went into the grave, what they saw was spectacular. The headband or the turban was where it is like there was still a head in it. And the dress was still the same. It was like, you see, when you put it, uh, I just want, if I fold this around this, and I put it down like this, when I pull this thing out of it, this will never stand the same. When I pull it out, when I pull it down like this, you see it's also falling down. Yes. But when Jesus came out of it, the covering or the hand, this hanky at this time is, was still standing like the container was still in it. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, everything about how Jesus is so special. Man. And his death and his resurrection had been predicted many times. It was never an afterthought. I want you to know that Jesus' resurrection didn't happen after somebody has thought about something. It happened because it has been predestined to happen. Many are the things that we see today, but God has predestined them Amen. already. And because of that, we know that they will definitely happen. Hallelujah. Amen. If you read your Bible, and that is why I encourage you to read your Bible all the time, many of the things that you encounter in this world today are not new. They are not things that are just happening for happening's sake. They are things that have been predestined to happen. 
And the answers to them had also been predestined. Amen. Amen. So you know that one day you will die. But you also know that one day you will rise again. Amen. You know that one day you will be buried. But you also know that one day when Jesus comes, your body will be transformed and you will rise again from the dead. And not only will you, will you rise again from the dead, but you will start moving up. Today, if I tell you to suspend, you cannot. But when that time comes, your new body will be transformed into such a state that it will rise by itself Amen. to meet Jesus in the sky. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Bible says that this Jesus that you saw going, he will come in the same way. Amen. The way he went, that is the way he will also rise. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. If he had not done it, you will not be able to do it. Hallelujah. Amen. So his death and his resurrection on the third day was something to give you an identity of who you really are. That because he rose from the dead, I can rise from the dead. Hallelujah. Amen. And because on the third day he rose from the dead, there are things in your life. Who did this? Uh, 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 who has the daily guide today? And who read it this morning? Hallelujah. Amen. You see, dead bones, brittle, dry, could come back to life. That's right. Amen. If they could come back to life, what else is on, dead now. in your life yeah. that cannot come back to life? Come on, now. What? Tell me. What is in your life that is dead? The moment you identify with Jesus, the moment you become one with him, whatever is dead in your life has the power to come back to life. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't know what is dead in your life this morning. And I don't know what you are praying that will resurrect. But I can assure you this morning that as long as Jesus resurrected, that can also resurrect. Amen. Amen. Our faith, our faith in Jesus, our salvation depends on this one thing. If Jesus had not risen, you and me will not have any hope. Let's read 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Why do I bring all these scriptures out? To give you something to go back home and focus on. Amen. Hallelujah. So if you go home and you don't read it, then it becomes a problem. Verse 14. Chapter 15, verse 14, 1 Corinthians. And if Christ has not been raised in the third day, he did not rise from the dead. Our preaching, whatever I'm doing here this morning, is useless. And so is your faith. Our faith depends on this one thing. If Jesus, because you see, why would anybody want to die, suffer and die for the sake of Christ? Because he knows that one day he will also rise. But if Jesus had not risen, where would that all be? I am a Christian. You are a Christian. And we go through certain things in our lives which are so difficult which are so trying that sometimes we get to the point of saying that enough is enough. I wish I don't even exist again. But I still go
go through it with the hope that one day I will go to heaven and be with Jesus. Amen. That is why we live. That is why today we are still Christians. I have things I am praying for that have not come to pass. I have things that I have been crying to God for. There are things that has even become difficult. And they are more difficult than when I was in the world. They are more difficult. And let me tell you, there are things that have become even more difficult in my life since we started this ministry than before. Hallelujah. Amen. But the joy of still pressing on and going on is very simple. The fact that I know I'm being obedient to someone who one day will take me to his side. If there is no resurrection of the dead and I'm going to suffer like this and die and get rotten and nothing happens again, I will not do it. I do it because of the fact that I know that Jesus did not stay in the grave, but he rose from the dead. And because of that, it doesn't matter what I go through. One day, I will be taken to me in heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12 that he endured such opposition from sinful men. Why? Because he knew that he will go and sit at the right hand of God. If he was not going to rise, he would never have been going. He never would have gone to sit at the right hand side of God. So Jesus had to endure what he endured. He had to go through what he went through because he had hope that when he dies, he will rise again. If you sitting here this morning will know your identity in Christ and will know that even though you will suffer today, but tomorrow you will be belittled today, somebody will look down upon you, somebody will trample you down on the foot, but you know that there is coming a day that you will rise again. Amen. And because of that, you endure the things that you go through on this earth. For the simple fact that you know one day, you will rise again. Hallelujah. Amen. If Jesus had no reason, that hope will be dead. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Our faith is not in vain because of this day, because of the third day, because of the resurrection day. Hallelujah. Amen. If Jesus had no reason, like I earlier said, Christianity will be like Islam. Christianity will be like Buddhism. Christianity will be like Hare Krishna. Christianity will be like any other religion. The difference between all other religions and Christianity is that Jesus rose from the dead. Hallelujah! Amen. That is the difference. That is the one simple difference between all and us. We are different. We are special. All of them, the one they follow, is dead. They call his name. He cannot respond. But you call on the name Jesus and he responds. How does he respond? Because when you are sick, and you call on his name, you get strength back. When you are being possessed by another spirit or oppressed by another spirit, when you call on that name, because Bible says that he has been given a name that is above all names, that at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, whether in heaven, on earth, or under the earth. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. If he did not rise, he 
will not have that power. He promised us. He said, when I go, I will send you a counselor. If he had not gone, would he have been able to send us a counselor, the Holy Spirit? Now we, we cry and we call on him and he responds because he's alive. Hallelujah. Let us read 2 Corinthians chapter 4. I am just building some confidence back in you. The things that are dead in your life must rise. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, I want you to know this one thing. It doesn't matter what you are going through today. It does not matter. It may be difficult. It may be trying. It, you have come to your wit's end. Brother, what did you know? See, yes, one be one. Where you have gotten to in life. If Jesus <coughs> is dead, buried, and had not risen, it would be difficult. This is not, I said, 4. Chapter 4, verse 14. Because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead will also raise us with Jesus and present us with you to himself. That's how come we could stand. That is how come we could go through the things that we go through. Beloved in the Lord, there is coming a time that without the hope of resurrection, without the hope of resurrection, you cannot stand it anymore. Stephen was stoned to death. But even when he was being stoned, the Bible says that he could still lift up his eyes and look into heaven. And what did he see? He saw Jesus standing at the right hand side of God. He saw him. If he were dead, he would not be seen. But not only did he see him, but he saw him standing. Your Bible and my Bible says that Jesus went to heaven and did what? And did what? And did what? He sat at the right hand side of God. But when Stephen saw him, what was he doing? Jesus will stand for you. Amen. He will stand for you. Amen. There are times that he will not sit, but he will stand because of what you are going through. Jesus can no longer sit down. Amen. He had to stand up. Amen. We saw Stephen. He was being stoned to death. And Stephen could still say that, I will not deny my God. It doesn't matter what you are going through. If you will only continue to stand your ground, and say that God, because of your son, I will still go through this. Jesus will no longer sit. He will stand on your behalf. He will stand on your behalf. I pray that many of us will see Jesus standing this morning. Interceding for us. Hallelujah. What is dead in your life? What is dead in your life? I don't know. It could be your finances. And I have said it many times. If you are all okay and everybody has enough money and can only go to work in the morning and close at five and come back home, you will see his children. 
he can sit down and read the Bible. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But because it is not like that, we need to wake up and run around at dawn. So, we are not able to do what we are supposed to do. Many of us cannot even come to church some days. Why? If you call the person and ask, the excuse is about money. But it's not an excuse. I don't see it as an excuse. I see it as a need. Beloved in the Lord, don't think that when you have 20 CDs, it means that everybody has 20 CDs. Somebody has zero. When you have 100 CDs, don't think that everybody has 100 CDs because somebody has 20. When you have 1 million, don't think that everybody has 1 million. And that is why in the church, that is why in the church, the early church, I mean, somebody could go and sell the things and then come and support others. That is why the church could grow and 3,000 people could come and join a church in one day. Because the church was there to hold one another. The one who does not have money has something else to contribute to the church. And the one who has money can also contribute his money. But they all did that. The one who has money or buildings and could sell, did not just sell because there is nothing. He sold because Jesus rose from the dead. Amen. And he knows that if I lose my building today and bless somebody else, I will go to heaven Amen. and sit at the right hand side of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Because Jesus is sitting at the right hand side of God. So when you go, you go to him and you also be at his right hand side. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Many of us are not being able to do the things for that we are supposed to do because we don't know that Jesus rose from the dead. That's right. We know it because somebody has said something but we don't really believe it in our hearts. If we do really believe in our hearts, and we know that one day we will also die and we will rise with him. Beloved, our faith in Christ will be different. It will definitely be different. You don't know your identity. You don't know the one you are following. You don't know the one you are believing. You think he died and it's finished. No, it is not. He's alive. Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. And because he's alive, we have hope that one day we will live again. Even though I, was so, I, I always say this thing in this church that even though today I am poor, the day that I get to heaven, my status will change. And not only will I have money, I will walk on gold. I will walk on gold. Today, you don't even see it. When you even want a necklace to buy, you can't buy the one that is gold. Because your money is too small. Hallelujah. Amen. But one day, you not only have a gold necklace, but you will walk on gold. Why? Because the man Jesus died and he's risen. What are the benefits that we can get from that one thing that happened on that fateful Sunday? The resurrection day. The third day. We are giving hope again that we will rise up. 
And all that I do today, all that I live for today, is that one day, because Jesus has gone ahead of me, I will go and be with him. If you have that understanding, and if you have that hope, based on the word of God, I can assure you this morning that it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. What happens on this world or on this earth is temporal. It is only temporal because one day we will all see this place and a new heaven and a new earth shall come. Hallelujah. Amen. It gives us power over death. It doesn't matter who you are. You now have power over death. What are you saying? But I will die one day. I will die one day. So what are you talking about? Are you saying that I will never die? No. But you will rise again. You will die. But one day you will rise again. Bible says that if only all, all that we are doing here is about today and this day and our life on earth, we are the most miserable people. If your faith is about, you see, and let me say this, that is why we are struggling so much for the things that will be rotten. For the things, because we do not believe that there is a good life after this one. We do not believe. If we believe that Jesus rose and he's sitting at the right hand side of God, then we know that one day the same will happen to us. And because the same will happen to us, I will not be worried too much about the things here. We are worried too much about the things here because we do not have faith that one day we will go and be with Jesus. We do not believe it. In our minds, if I don't grab it here, that's the end. But if you will today change that mentality, and know that Jesus rose from the dead on the third day and he went up to heaven and the disciples saw him physically going. Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 14 and 15 that when he <laughs> rose from the dead, many people saw him. Many people saw him. Next week we'll look at that. But I want you to know that many eyes saw that he rose and many eyes saw him going into heaven. Because of that, we also have that kind of hope. And that is why the Bible says that we need to gather our treasures and keep them where. And keep them where? Because there it will never be rotten. There it will never be rotten. But because we don't believe it, because we don't trust in the God that we serve, that he rose and he is in heaven, we are struggling Christianity today has become about the things that we can see and touch. How many houses can I build here? What can I put in my bank account? How many shares can I buy? It is not a bad thing. You have to work. The Bible says that any hand that does not work must not eat. So we need to work. 
we need to make money. But the love of money is the root of what? And because we are not thinking about tomorrow, where our soul will be, we have become grabbers on earth. Grabbing everything that we can touch. Grabbing everything that we can grab. And because of that, we are in church, yet we are not here. Like I said, if you had read Ezekiel 37 this morning, you will know, beloved in the Lord, that we are in church, but many of us are dead. Many of us are simply dead. We sit here, but we are on our way to where? We are sitting here. Beloved, church is not a playground. Church is not a playground. It is serious business. The worst of it all is when you are here or in any other church, yet you do not recognize the one who has called you. Why are you saying we do not recognize him? If you recognize him as your Lord and as your Savior, you will be obedient to him. If you know that he is the one who rose from the dead, and because of him, you will also rise. Beloved, your life will be different. You will not come to church and sit in church, yet your mind is out of church. You will not come to church and sit in church, yet the things that you are searching for is the next thing on WhatsApp or Facebook. Many of us come to church, but we have no respect for God. We have no respect whatsoever for God. We sit here like we are serious people, yet our minds are not here. Everything that we are doing is about what is in the world. The world has taken hold of us to an extent that we all will say openly, Jesus died and he rose. Yet we do not believe it. Because if you know that he is the one who is coming to take you away, your relationship with him will be different from what you do today. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us read 1 Peter chapter 3. I am bringing to you to a point of the kind of power that you have so you can exercise that power. So you can exercise that power that you have. 1 Peter. Chapter 3. Verse 22. Who has gone into where? Heaven. And is at God's right hand. With angels, authorities, and powers in submission to him. Beloved in the Lord, he is the one who has called you. The one who has gone into heaven. The one who is sitting at the right hand of God. All powers and authorities are in submission to him. If they are in submission to him, they are in submission to you. For he said, open your Bibles to Luke chapter 10. I just want you to know what he gave to you. The 
the one who has all powers and authorities in submission to him. Says in Luke chapter 10, verse 19, he says that I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy and nothing will harm you. Beloved in the Lord, what are you afraid and what are you afraid of? If you recognize that Jesus is gone there and all powers are in submission to him, he's telling you this morning, it doesn't matter what you are going through, you have power over Satan. Amen. You have power over him. Amen. All that you need to do is to exercise that power. If you acknowledge and if you know that that power is in your hands. Hallelujah. Amen. If you know that you have that power in your hands, why can't you exercise it? Why are you chickening out all the time? The slightest thing you are running away. You are afraid. If I don't do this, I will not be able to get this. If I don't do that, I will not be able to receive that. But beloved in the Lord, Bible is telling us that everything is in submission to him. And that authority that he has, he has released it to you. Amen. You have it. Amen. You have it. Amen. And this morning, I would like that you use it. Whatever you have lost, whatever the enemy has taken, whatever that is dead in your life, you are going to prophesy to it that it should rise again. You are going to speak unto that part of your life, that thing in your life that the devil has held on to. But you can only do it. You can only exercise that authority when you know the one who gives that authority. If you know Jesus, and if you acknowledge him as your God, your Lord, and your Savior, if you acknowledge him, and if you have that confidence in him, you can boldly take that which is yours. For he is the one who gives the strength. Hallelujah. He has become your advocate in heaven. If he never rules, he will not be in heaven interceding for you. Everybody needs a lawyer at one point or the other. But for us believers, we need a lawyer every single day. Because there is somebody called Satan who is the father of all lies and is always lying about you, saying the wrong things about you to God. But praise be to his name. Man. That there is an advocate, the one who died and who rose again. He's sitting at the right hand side of God, interceding for you. Amen. Amen. That is why when Stephen was being stoned, he could rise out Jesus. and stand on his behalf. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He's the one who secured our justification for us. Amen. We are justified. Because he resurrected. He gave us the opportunity to receive the Holy Spirit. Read John chapter 16, verse 7. John chapter 16, verse 7. Bible says that, but very truly I tell you, it is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. If Jesus had not gone to heaven, you will never have the Holy Spirit. We have the Holy Spirit today for just one reason, because Jesus died and he arose. 
and he went into heaven. And he could send the advocate, the comforter, the Holy Spirit to us. He's here with us this morning. He's here to speak on your behalf. He's here to do something new for you. He's here this morning. Amen. He's here this morning. Amen. He's here this morning. Yes. So that you will bring to life that thing that is dead in your life. Amen. Amen. This is the third day. And Jesus is no longer in the grave. The woman got there, but he was not in the grave. He is not in the grave. He is out of the grave. Why do we remind ourselves this morning? We remind ourselves this morning so that we will know our position, our identity. Hallelujah. I want us to pray this morning. There are many things that are dead in your life. But for the simple reason of that resurrection, the things that are dead in your life will become alive today. They will come back to life today. They will come back to life today. They will come back to life today. That sickness that troubles you, today it will die. Today you will pray and you will do it yourself. Your faith and my faith will be joined. And we will all pray that anything that is dead in our lives will rise today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you this morning. I want you to thank the Lord this morning. Just thank you. Thank you this morning. Thank him 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 this morning. Thank him, thank him, thank you. Thank him. Thank him. Thank Jesus that he rose from the dead on your behalf. He took the keys of death from Hades. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you for that thing that you did for us. We thank you that the grave was unable to hold you in. Jesus, we thank you this morning. Jesus, we thank you this morning. Jesus, we thank you this morning. Nema moro a shatara ba broka sandaya. Nema mama shatara ba broka sandaya. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Shatara ba broka sandaya. Nema mama shatara. He is risen from. Thank you. 
I want you to call upon the name of Jesus. Pray, pray, pray. Cry out to him. Cry out to him. He is here. 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 I want you to pray. I want you to cry. You will not go on the same. I want you to cry to him. He is here. He is here. You cannot be in his presence. And go and walk the same. You cannot be here. You cannot be here. And go and walk the way you can. It is not possible. It is not possible. You have to go and go. A different person. A different person. The Holy Spirit is here. The Spirit of God is here. The Spirit of God is here. Anything that is done. Anything that is done. Anything that is done. Anything that is done. We call it back to life. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Anything that is done. Today's resurrection day. Father, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Today, I wish you death. Because Jesus has risen. Because he rose from the dead. Everything that is dead is in truth. I call it back to life. In the name of Jesus. I call it back to life. In the name of Jesus, I call it back to life. In the name of Jesus, I call it back to life. In the name of Jesus, Satan, we have authority. We have authority over your plans, over your wife, over your plans, over your wife. In the name of Jesus, anything that you have held on in the life of anyone here. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, whatever you have killed, whatever you have killed, in the delight here, in the name of Jesus, we bring them back to life. We bring them back to life. Every parent has been dead. In the name of Jesus, we bring them back to life. Every demon has been dead. In the name of Jesus. We bring it back to life. In the name of Jesus, every body that is dead, we bring it back to life. In the name of Jesus, anyone who is dead in his hell, in the name of Jesus, I speak resurrection. I speak resurrection into that life. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we will not go back and say, Father, we will not go back and say, I declare this morning, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name that is done, I call it back to life. In the name that is done, I call it back to life. In the name of Jesus, whatsoever is done, whatsoever is done, even in the life of your children, I call it back to life. I call it back to life. I call it back to life. In the name of Jesus, anything that is done in this room, anything that is done in this room, Lord God Almighty, by the resurrection power, I call it back to life. For your wife is in every shine. That the spirit that is in us. It's the same spirit that lifted Jesus from the grave. Father, upon your word, I speak according to your word. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, I call it to life. I call back to life everything that is done. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Can I stop at one? Everything that is done. Everything that is done. 